Hi, Charles Bowman here. While well, I'm out at Muscatatuck National Wildlife Refuge for the beginning of this video. This is about the solar setup I've got with this camper. It's not so much a detailed how-to, but if you want to go to that spot where I'm putting, talking about putting the panel and how I put a hole in the floor to make this all work, I'll put a time below so you can skip right to that. Thanks for watching. What I'm saying is that not everyone really needs solar. I found that most people in the polls that I've done and I've checked online, most people typically camp on weekends, every now and then a long trip, and a lot of people make dead sure that they're going to have shore power wherever they camp. And so a solar system really is not all that needed. But there are times, even for those people, but especially for my wife and I, where some kind of solar system or at least a battery system really helps. And so we built ours around a Jackery 500. The Jackeries are great. And I have a solar panel that I can open up that's portable, but I want to be able to protect that. I don't want to leave that out in a campground where it might be taken. So that's why you see a solar panel behind me. It's a Renogy 100 watt panel that I have wired going into my camper, but I'm not having to install a charge controller, an inverter, and all that, a fuse panel. I don't need to do any of that because all of that is inside the Jackery batteries. And so the 500 will serve my purposes. There's a Jackery 1000 now that's really great as well. But even for people like my wife and I, we have shore power quite often, but sometimes we're at a national park where we don't have shore power. And so we need something there. Or if we're going from a campground to a campground that does have shore power, we may stop somewhere at a Cracker Barrel. And I would like a way to run my uh, Max Air fan and run some lights inside, maybe watch a movie on a laptop. And so by using this system with Jackery lithium batteries and running everything 12 volt as much as possible, I can accomplish that with this very simple system. Well, I've moved to the back of the wildlife refuge. This is the old Myers cabin. And this is just a gorgeous place, especially known for uh, the the birds here. Uh, just huge flocks migrate through here. And if you ever get a chance, it's just outside of Seymour, Indiana. Well, let me tell you about the two different ways I would charge up my Jackery. Actually, there's three. Whenever we're driving, we plug our Jackery units into our car, into the cigarette lighter outlets, and so um, we're charging all the time. We rarely let our uh, batteries, either the 160 or the 500, get down very far. Right now, the 160 is running this wireless mic system, so it's really, really handy for me. So in a typical situation, we would be at a campground, and we could plug into shore power and charge that way. But what if we don't have shore power? Well, here's what we would do. Well, if it's a pretty day at the campground, it's sunny and there's no shore power, but we are in the campground at our site, then we could charge up our Jackery by getting out this Jackery Solar Saga 100 panel. It's foldable, very portable. It's really well made and it's got some USB ports there, a short cord that comes out of the back with an Anderson connection. So this connects and it's got an eight millimeter barrel. And when I plug this in, <clears throat> I don't know if you can see it, but it's a blue light on here. And that means it's, it's throwing power into the Jackery. It works great, we'll charge this up. But what if we're leaving the campground? I really can't leave these out. I really can't. They would have legs and be gone, I'm quite sure. It'd be nice if we could trust everyone, but we can't. So that's why I changed my ideas about uh, having a solar panel. And now I have a permanent one up there that allows me to keep this safe, but still charge it. Let me show you that next. 
So let's say my wife and I are leaving the campground, but we really need to get the Jackery recharged, but we don't want to leave anything out. So I'm just going to do an overview. When I get back home, I'll show you more close-ups about this, but we've got our panel. I've got the cords coming out there, and what I've got are some extension cables. I have an inline fuse, and over here, I've got an access port cut in the floor. This is a cable that's plugged into the Jackery. Extension cords there, this plugs in here, and inside the Jackery will be locked and charging. It's a safe system and it's going to work out great. Well, let's take a look at my Renogy. It's a 100 watt solar panel. Uh, this is a slim version and it's got black trim, uh, which I probably would have thought about painting it black and I don't have to. It's less than four feet, less than two feet across and down. And uh, here are the cables that are already plugged in. Some suitcase models have different uh, controllers and things back here, but we don't need to worry about that because we are going into the Jackery that's, as I mentioned, it's already got that charge controller in the inverter. So we just want to be able to send the power in. So uh, I've just got these taped on here right now. So then when I'm putting it up on the roof rack, the course won't be getting in the way. And uh, it doesn't weigh much, 14, 15 pounds, I think. But you're only going to have to lift it, up, lift it up there once. It's got here various holes, and it just depends. Uh, I think these are spaced perfectly for some of the Renogy mounts. Okay, so I'm about to uh, cut my access port and small change of plans. I was going to use this hole cutter, and I did a couple sample holes, and I found out that this doesn't quite fit. These caps do, but not this. And I think it's three quarters of an inch. Very close, but I don't want to like rough it with a saw or anything. So uh, I'm going to go back to what I had originally. Here you see a larger hole here. And I, I had bought this the other day. And um, this was my original plan. I think this is an inch. It's got the cap here. And then I don't have a slip cap to slide in, but I do have this rubber stopper that goes in that works fine, but I'll, I'll find a slip cap that works. And so this fits in like 98% perfectly. And it's actually fine if I would put in a lot of silicone, which I actually want to seal uh, the edges here. But I've got some rubber gasket, and I use th uh, this with some of the installs of the LED lights on the back of some runaway campers. So I've got this piece that I'm going to be fitting in the hole here, and it allows it to be snugged in tight. So I'm going to fill, cut the hole put silicone in there and just let it set for a bit. Then I'll put this in and let it dry. And then I'll, then I'll uh, put in this PVC joint and it'll, it'll all be good and let it set. And then I'll silicone above and below and we'll be all set. So it's a little larger, but you know, maybe there'll be a reason why I, I wish I had more space. So I think this will work great. Okay, I'm underneath and here we go. Almost through. I don't know if I can make it. Let's see if they'll let me go through here. There we go. Whew, another hole in the fiberglass composite. So that actually went pretty well. Um, I had to push that one last fraction to get all the way through. So right now, I've cleaned out the hole. I've filled um, all of the sections of the fiberglass composite with a clear silicone and then now I put in this piece of rubber gasket I'm gonna let it set for a minute because I tried to push this in it just comes right out so uh, after this dries a bit in there then I'll be pushing this in and then all I have left to do is just do some um, silicone especially around the bottom and then put the cap on and this part of the job is done so it'll be real handy with the battery right here and I'll, I'll show you that later on so uh, nothing fatal happened Whew. So here's what it looks like, kind of trimmed up. And then here is the slip plug that drops in. It's nice and flush. And let's go look underneath. So underneath it's nice and sealed. And I've got threads. So this will go like that. I'll tighten that all, all up when, I'm, uh, when we are traveling. Well, I'm sorry to tell you, I did not record me 
installing this solar panel. It's just a matter of four U-bolts. I had to drill some holes, and I'll tell you about that in a second. Um, but it really would have made a very exciting time lapse. Here's the installation, and I really mean simple. I have four U-bolts, and for this runaway camper with the runaway supplied roof racks, I got two inch, they're quarter inch thick, and three and a half inches long, which is a little bit too long. So I measured and I cut them off with a hacksaw and then you had to carefully get them going the first time. I filed them and, and that all worked just fine. And so I fit them under and it's a little tight, but I got them all nice and tight with lock nuts. So it's rock solid on there. And one warning, uh, when I was drilling new holes because these Renogy holes di didn't line up perfectly with my U-bolts. So I got to use some of them, but I had to drill some new ones. And so imagine that I take, you're seeing me take it over to the deck. I laid a blanket down. It's flipped over. So the solar panel is down. And so I'm drilling through here. Just be careful because it's not very thick aluminum. So you're drilling through and all of a sudden you're through it and you could so easily damage the solar panel. So I put two or three little pieces of wood kind of thin underneath where I was drilling every time because every time I drilled, I went through and hit that wood just barely. And you think you control it, but boy, you're through. So make sure you... Uh, protect the the solar panel so you don't kill it before you've ever used it. So that's really all there was to it. There's actually room up there for a second um, panel just like this. Right now I don't think I will need that. Uh, we just really don't do off-grid stuff um, and for the kind of camping that we do uh, in between places where we have shore power or we're at a national park as I mentioned um, there we would uh, need to have a way to charge up the battery, lithium battery. Um, and so between this and the um, Jackery foldable panel and just driving and charging it that way, uh, we'll be fine with our power needs with the lithium battery. Uh, let me get the camera up closer and I'll just show you close-ups up, close up here of what I did. So here you can see the uh, cords coming out from the solar panel and you can see the U-bolts there. Just that simple, not a lot to it. Just, as I said, be really careful with the installation. Well, let me show you how I would hook up the solar panel to the Jackery. Remember, I've got an access port down there. I've got these two cords coming from the solar panel. And um, I think out at the refuge, I had it draped down here, but I think a better solution is I'm gonna have it coming down the front. And I found on Amazon some two inch uh, black loom, split black loom that you can fit wires in. I use this with LED installs um, underneath the camper. So I've got some two inch that I'm going to be ordering and I'm going to kind of gather these wires in that black loom and so it'll be kind of neat, a lot neater coming down. And so um, they're male and female and there's just no way to mess that up. You just plug things in. So I've got my uh, um, fuse here. It's a 10 amp fuse. And so I'm going to plug that in first you want it close to the solar panels, what my friends have told me to do. So now I'm going to plug this in. Get this one plugged in. And that's all there is up here. And so, like I said, there'll be black loom. When we're traveling and not using this, the, the cables that are connected to the panel, I'm going to have them wrapped and cable tied up there. And all these others will just stay in my storage box. So that's going to make it quite handy. So I now will have them draped down. And then let me uh, go down underneath here and I'll show you what happens next. So all that's left to do is get these plugged into the extension cables. Now this is what's going to feed underneath. So here is a uh, eight millimeter barrel connector. That's what you need for the Jackery. And I, I, I bought this. Some people make their own, but uh, I got this online. Uh, there's a guy that I watch on YouTube. He goes by Hobotech, and he really knows the jackeries. And so if you, if you get one of those and want to know anything about the wiring, or if you want to put two panels together, I'm not going to give advice on that, but he'll tell you uh, the cautions, that, what you need to do and not do when you're uh, running more than one panel. So I've got my access port, and I've got it. Again, it has a cap that's threaded. So water's not going to get up there. It's all siliconed in. So here's my jackery. This is coming through. And again, I have a, a cap here that's a slip that will fit in there and cover it. I cut a hole in the foam uh, flooring that my wife put in. So I plug it in right there. 
and then as soon as you plug it in, if you're getting any kind of light on that solar panel, a blue light comes on and you're charging. So we're going to go, say my wife and I, we're going to go off and um, go hiking, uh, doing photography. We'll just lock this up and yes, you'll see the wires, but that panel's not going anywhere and neither is that Jackery 500 unless they really want it badly, I guess. So this is our, uh, our plan B when we're charging uh, the Jackery. So again, why I like this system so much is I don't have to install inside here a fuse panel, a charge controller, an inverter, nothing wrong with that. A friend of mine's got a beautiful system and I'll pop up a picture and let you see what his looks like. But he's a definitely more of an off-grid person than I am. Um, and so he's got different lithium batteries, whereas I've got the, the Jackery or other brands that have everything inside. It's all there, so it's nice and neat. And I don't have to mess with all that. Um, and with these panels, they're great. Uh, there's a green light back here, and it shows that it's already it's obviously getting in the sun. What's nice about these uh, Solar Saga, they do cost more, like three times as much. That one, that Renogy, I think cost me 110 and this costs, I believe, the normal price is $299 unless you can catch a sale. But boy, they are really handy. Uh, they fold up. They have magnetic enclosures. That it, it helps it shut tight. It's got USB ports uh, built in, so you can actually have this out and, and charge a phone or an iPad or something. It's got a USB-C as well. It's got a little uh, door back here, and so I plug this in and plug this into the Jackery, just like before. And there you go. And so this is what we would do to charge it when we are in camp. Um, as I keep mentioning, you know, things can uh, walk away at a campground. Um, we've never had anything stolen, but it certainly can happen. And so we've got uh, this easy panel to use. Um, and you really don't want this sitting in the sun. So it's possible that I would keep this in the camper or in the shade somewhere and get this position. This has got kickstands in the back, so you can angle it just right. and. Uh, it's already taking in power right now. Um, if I wanted to have uh, the Jackery inside because it's really hot, I could actually just hook up extension cables to this cable and have this position so it's out in the sun. And then, if say we're there all day long, we're editing or we're doing whatever we one day we've had a long uh, travel day or something, and we're just staying in the campground, I could be moving this during the day to get it to line up. Yeah, it would be nice if I could angle that as well. But uh, that's kind of a pain. You have to be turning the camper all the time, and people with big rigs obviously can't do that. So we get what we get out of that panel. Um, but this one is more movable, obviously, and so we could uh, position it to bring in the maximum amount of power. So that's the system right there. Um, next, what I'd like to do is show you uh, just inside and talk about just how we uh, put all this system in use inside we can switch easily, easily between shore power and our lithium batteries. So we'll go in and I'll show you that next. Well, now I've got the camper plugged into an outlet in the garage so I can run the air conditioner, which I prefer not to run in this small of a box that we're sleeping in. Uh, it seemed to always be either too cold or hot, but uh, we run it if we, need, if we can and, and really need to. But that's why I'm excited about the new 10-speed 12-volt fan that I put in with the vent and it really pulls air through. I, you can look and see a video of that and you can also find a video that I did where I completely did the rewiring and I put in uh, new power strips, smaller with USB ports and I put in a ground fault outlet here and an outlet. This cord here is going out so you, I can plug in things outside if I want to. So I've got the LED lights running and that's plugged in here with this cord. The fan is 12-volt but I found on Amazon this adapter. I can plug this in so I can run the fan with regular shore power. I don't have to plug it into the Jackery and I won't. If, we're, if we have shore power, there's no reason not to plug it in and run it this way. So let me turn that off so we can have the best of both worlds. And um, really about anything that we would run with shore power will be running just fine with this Jackery 500 without any issues at all. So. Uh, we've got it covered both ways. Well, the power is turned off, and so what am I going to do now? Well, if I was at a campground uh, without power or were at a Cracker Barrel, one thing I'm not going to do is run the AC. Um, if you are someone that absolutely has to have the air conditioning or you've got a CPAP machine that takes so much power, 
Um, you may need to consider carrying a generator with you. We've got a Honda 2000, but we don't take it with us anymore because we, we just simply don't need it. I really don't like using the air conditioner. It's such a small space. I see that I either felt too cold or hot, not much in between it seemed like. So um, if you've got those issues, then you may have to consider always camping with shore power and have the, a generator as backup. So let's say we're at a campground or we're at a Cracker Barrel. What do I want to run? Well, I, I want to run that fan for sure. And so I've got a couple of options. Actually, I've got a small uh, lithium battery. This is a Max Oak Blue Eddy, and it's unusual because it's got a regular outlet. So the, uh, I showed you that I could power this uh, Max fan by plugging it in with that adapter. But I could actually have this setting up there, and this would run that fan for quite a while, for sure. But it's a 12-volt fan. And so that's where the Jackery comes into play. And so I've got some conduit coming across. And actually, if I try to reach it here, it won't reach. If I turn this sideways, it'll fit. But uh, I've actually got this adapter. The smaller Jackery uh, doesn't have a cigarette plug-in. So it comes with this. So I actually, if I wanted to, just I could plug this in here, push the DC button, plug this in. You heard a beep, there goes the fan, and there's the fan running. So I can turn this and make it fit. So that will take care of, the, of that fan. Let me turn that off. But what about the LED lights? I can plug it in directly to the front of this and run my LED lights. So let me turn this. And I'll turn my lights on. There they go. And so I can run it that way. And, um, if I have more things plugged into this outlet, I can actually just take this plug coming from this um, surge protector and whatever is plugged into here, except for the AC, would run. I could plug this in directly or I can just use an extension cord. If this is down below, I could plug this into this. I made a short cord and I could plug this into the Jackery and I can run everything um, that's not a huge power hungry device and we we won't be using much of anything like that so uh, that's how it works so um, we can just plug in directly this way or like I said whatever is plugged in here like say a laptop or a, a phone's charging we can um, power it by plugging this in and this will be underneath and off we go so a super handy system it's going to take care of our needs and most of everything that we would be running in here it just won't use that much power. I would say what would use the most power would be laptops or if I brought a screen with me to do editing or to um, maybe to see a movie a little bit more easily. But other than that, this is how our system works. We can switch easily from shore power to lithium batteries. Well, before I go outside and do my final bit on this video, I did want to just say a little bit about these lithium battery packs. They're great. As I've mentioned several times, everything's inside there. You've got the uh, charge controller, you've got the inverter, everything is in the package. And so it's very handy, unless you are more of an off-grid person and you can you know, build something that'll work great for you. So if you're a van lifer or uh, someone who's long-term out there or really goes off-grid, what I'm showing you probably won't be enough. So you may have to beef it up or come up with the system that will work for you. But what I want to mention about these, we, we plug 12 volt devices in here and you've got to watch out because some of these lithium units, not Jackery, but there are some brands out there that look the same and you go, oh, I found something even cheaper. Well, they are cheaper because they probably don't have what's called a regulated 12 volt port. And what that means is if it's regulated, if I've got, especially a refrigerator, that's probably the most important thing. A refrigerator, probably some CPAP machines as well. When you plug that refrigerator in here, and that's what we would do. Our refrigerator stays in, in our van. We don't keep it in here. So likely I would have our small Jackery run that, and it can run all night long easily, more than one night. Um, but I'm running the refrigerator in the van with the Jackery. But if you have a unit like this, but it's not 12 volt regulated, that what that means is it goes from 100% to 90 to 80. As it drops down, usually it's around 50 or 60%. Most uh, 12 volt refrigerators will shut off because that particular lithium battery, except for the Jackery and a couple others, the power coming out of this port drops as well. And so they are not tolerant of the power dropping those refrigerators. And so a friend of mine has one 
and he had a different lithium battery. When it got down to 50%, the refrigerator went off. That could be bad news, couldn't it? You're gone all day, for example, and you're trusting that uh, your refrigerator is staying cold and you could possibly have things ruined. Hopefully your refrigerator would keep things cold uh, for a while without the power. So just that's my warning. Make sure when you buy one of these batteries, make sure it has a 12-volt regulated port because refrigerators and other devices will stop working as the power goes down. So just be aware of that. Well, there you go. This is our simple solar system. When we're off shore power, we've got it covered. And I hope that you've learned something. If you have any questions, leave it in the comments below. And thanks for watching.